Hi everybody, it's Brandon. Thank you again for joining me in another skincare vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Pyongkong Yul Auto Mild Sun Cream. This is a Korean sun cream or sun screen. The reason why I'm using air quotes is because there are some caveats to the sun sunscreen, sun cream that I want to discuss in this video. It's going to be a review of the product overall in terms of its viscosity and how well it moisturizes, as well as its ability to actually protect you from not only the UVB rays that burn from the sun, but also the UVA aging rays. But before we begin, please hit the like button down below. It really helps my channel grow and reach more people, and I really appreciate it. And definitely stick around for future videos. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell. Join in this community, and I would love to have you here for future videos. I post skincare videos every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as well as a weekend vlog on Sundays. So this is a Korean sunscreen that is, let's see, it is 2.53 ounces, so it's perfect, perfect travel size. I still keep mine in the box that it comes in. I don't know why, but like I keep all of my skincare items in the original box until I'm done with it because I just, I just like keeping it in the box, I don't know. So Korean sunscreens are fantastic. We love the Korean sunscreens because of the vehicles that they're in. They're, they tend to be on the very light side. They sink in, they smooth, they moisturize very easily. They melt like butter on the skin. And we, we like them because they aren't thick and they're very, supposedly very effective at uh, helping to reduce the the UV factor and help to protect our skin from the sun. But as we've seen from recent studies, Korean studies on Korean sunscreen SPFs, sometimes the these Korean sunscreens, which are very light and heavenly, they may not actually be the SPFs that are on label. Take in point the Purito sunscreen controversy that recently occurred on the internet. I actually had a video of that and you can check that out. But basically, that was a Korean sunscreen that is marketed as an SPF 50, but in reality, ind independent lab tests showed that it was really an SPF of 18 or 19. So now, in regard to the Pyongkong Yule, I'll talk about how well it protects your skin from the sun in just a minute, but I kind of wanted to just go over the ingredients first, and then I will also apply it to my skin so you can see how it looks. Now, I've also reviewed this briefly in my Yes Style haul. I got this on Yes Style uh, a month or so ago, and I reviewed this previously in a, in a different video. You can check that out. But this is a very good hydrating sunscreen. It has certain plant extracts in it in here that may be potentially helpful for the skin that have antioxidant capabilities and anti-inflammatory capabilities. So it has Lancera japonica extract in here. I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying that correctly, but there are studies showing that it can, that this extract can help with wound repair in the skin in a certain extent through collagen synthesis. Now, if you have any sort of condition, skin condition that you need medical attention for, definitely speak to your healthcare provider. This isn't meant to be replacement for medical advice. Also, this has Japanese mugwort in here. Japanese mugwort is a really good promising ingredient that is also a good source of antioxidants. And when applied topically, there's some research to suggest that Japanese mugwort could actually enhance skin barrier repair and function. I mean, just a basic moisturizer, especially a moisturizer that may have ceramides in, in here, like the CeraVe moisturizer, th that's going to just generally repair your and help your skin barrier function. But having extra ingredients that may have antioxidant capabilities in here that are specifically researched for its, its ability to repair the skin barrier function is incredibly promising and I think is a good ingredient to have in here. It's a, a generally benign ingredient, the, the Japanese mugwort. Not a lot of people will have irritation with it, but usually there's going to be at least you know a small proportion of people who are going to experience irritation from anything. So j just be aware that there, there are ingredients in here that most people can can utilize and, and apply to their skin okay without any adverse reaction, but there's gonna be, again, that small proportion that may have those reactions. Mugwort is also anti-inflammatory, and there's been there's some research to suggest, at least in animal models, that the topical application of Jap Japanese mugwort can help with skin conditions like dermatitis, which is basically an inflammation and dryness of the skin. So another thing it has in here is Camellia sinensis extract, and if you remember, if you remember back to my video on the benefits of tea for the skin, Camellia sinensis is the tea plant. That's where we get our black tea, our green tea, our white tea, our oolong teas. I'm actually 
drinking tea right now if I can find it. <laughs> I'm actually drinking tea right now. I'm drinking a black tea, but it all comes from the same plant and that's Camellia sinensis. I love this product. I love this ingredient in skincare because again, it's another fairly benign ingredient that most people can tolerate and it has antioxidant capabilities in here. That's my favorite word today, capabilities. That a good source of antioxidants that has been shown to inhibit to a certain extent uh, the uh, MMPs or matrix metalloproteinases, which are enzymes in the skin that degrade collagen and elastin that are often induced by or activated through UV exposure and to a certain extent also blue light and visible light exposure. Anything that you can do to sort of inhibit or reduce the expression of those MMPs, I think go for it, especially with a topical ingredient like tea, green tea, white tea, especially if it has low risk of adverse effects, I think it's an important ingredient to include. And I, I wanna see definitely more moisturizers, creams, even sunscreens that have this ingredient. And Camellia sinensis also is a good source of EGCG, which is epigallocatechin gallate, which is a powerful antioxidant that has been shown to be photoprotective or UV protective when applied to the skin, as well as when consumed orally. Speaking of which, I'm gonna drink my tea. I'm drinking the East Frisian tea from Harneys and Sons. I really like this tea. I'm, I'm really into black teas. I like green teas. I have a Japanese sencha as well, but I really like black teas and oolong teas as well as white teas. And then I think green tea is like further on the list. I used to love green tea, but now like once I got introduced to the varieties of tea, I, I tend to choose the black or the white. Ah, keep in mind, just putting tea on your skin can be incredibly drying, especially just like plain brewed cool tea can be drying because there are tannins in there that can actually dry out the skin and constrict constrict the skin. So you definitely wanna be applying a moisturizer right after that, like an oil-free moisturizer. But when you have it in a, in a moisturizing vehicle like this, Pyongkang Gyul Mild Auto Sun Cream. It's gonna be moisturizing already, so you're not gonna really have to worry about that dryness issue. Okay, so there's also ceramides in here. There's Ceramide NP, which is basically a class of lipids in the skin in addition to cholesterol and fatty acids that, it, that play a role in skin barrier function and hydration. But over time, ceramide, ceramides decrease in the skin in the, in the extracellular matrix. So it's th that's why like over time, a lot of people start to experience more issues with dryness and irritation of their skin. So it's, it's thought and it's been shown that the topical application of ceramides, like in this sun cream, as well as in different moisturizers, a lot of, a lot of moisturizers contain ceramides these days, but the topical application of these can help to increase the, the quantity in the skin and there, and help to further combat dryness. In addition to just to just the normal moisturizing ingredients like humectants and occlusive agents, as well as emollients. Okay, so finally, it also has var various different amino acids like proline and I think maybe arginine. Similar to the ordinary moisturizing factors, moisturizer with hyaluronic acid, they have they also include amino acids in there. And basically it forms an oligopeptide, which is a branch of fewer than 10 or 15 amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and one of the most abundant proteins in our body and in our skin is collagen, and that decreases over time too. And, and it's been shown that the topical application of peptides, of amino acids, can potentially help to improve collagen synthesis in the skin. So it's a potential promising good ingredient to have these amino acids to have in moisturizers, especially anti-aging moisturizers. Now, this isn't marketed as an anti-aging moisturizer, but I think if you are living sort of the anti-aging lifestyle, it's a good ingredient to include or to look for in your creams, your moisturizers, your sunscreens. Now, in terms of protecting your skin from the sun, the Pyongkang Yol Mild Auto Sunscreen, Sun Cream, it's not even called sunscreen. It doesn't have an SPF. It doesn't have a PA rating. SPF is basically the sun protective factor. It tells you how likely a, or how good a product is of protecting your skin from a sunburn. Whereas PA, which is mainly used in Asia and Europe, is helpful for telling you how good a product is for protecting yourself from UVA, which is which are the aging rays, radiation from the sun. So this, isn't, this doesn't have an SPF rating, doesn't have a PA rating. And I think the reason why it is, the only sunscreen filter it has in here is titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is a physical blocking agent. It's a natural mineral that just sits on the skin and helps to block more so UVB than UVA, but to a certain extent UVA as well. 
Um, it's not on its own. It's not a robust, reliable sunscreen filter or blocking agent that you should be relying on every single day. I mean, maybe if you are in a windowless room for the majority of the day, it may provide some protection with little with the little light that you may experience from just sort of the windows that you that you pass by occasionally, but it's not going to offer great protection. I think that it's better to just use this like maybe under a sunscreen, under a mineral tinted sunscreen or a chemical sunscreen, it'll, it might just sort of provide that little extra boost or blocking factor that you that you would want from a mineral, mineral agent. Now, in contrast to like a zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, especially on its own, isn't incredibly casty. It doesn't leave a super white cast and I will actually apply it to my skin so you can see what it's like. Now, one thing that I like about this sunscreen or this sun cream is it's incredibly moisturizing. The thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't really protect you sufficiently from the sun and you're gonna have to rely on a different sun sunscreen. Now, I'll go ahead and apply it to my skin, like I said, so you can just sort of see how it goes on. Um, I actually applied this earlier. I have on underneath right here the the dermatology tinted mineral sunscreen so this is incredibly moisturizing it doesn't leave a cast like i said and it goes on like a dream it's almost a little watery but despite it being a little watery it doesn't it doesn't dry the skin it's incredibly moisturizing it moisturizes your skin all day long again it has the ceramides in it and the vehicle ugh, like i said it's it's like a watery moisturizer not ugh. A watery but cream moisturizer. I don't, it's like a mix between the two, I guess. But yeah, I'm just sort of like spreading also my dermatology sunscreen around. So it's not incredibly casty. I mean, I think most skin types could get away with this, especially if you're gonna just wear a, like wear makeup under over it or a tinted sunscreen over it. Yeah, it may it may seem like my face is a lot whiter than it whiter or paler than it is because I'm wearing a I'm wearing the CeraVe tinted mineral hydrating sunscreen on my neck as well as a uh, mineral another mineral sunscreen from Beauty Counter on my arm which is a tinted sunscreen. You can see my sort of fake farmer tan going on there. But yeah, uh, it dries down quickly, but it leaves your skin moisturized the entire day. I really, really like it as a moisturizer, and I don't know if I'll be buying it again anytime soon. I mean, I still have a lot of a lot of more product in in the bottle, but I may buy it again when I run out, just because it does have good ingredients like the the tea extract as well as the the peptides, the amino acids, which I really like. And you know, you can definitely use this as sort of like a primer, maybe a makeup primer or a sunscreen primer, like right before you apply your tinted mineral sunscreen, just so it can go on a lot easier. But yeah, I really do like this. But if you're looking for a good Korean sunscreen that is actually going to protect yourself from the from the sun, don't rely on this sunscreen. Rely on it as a good moisturizer, a good daytime moisturizer that you can wear underneath your sunscreen, but don't rely on this as a sole sun protective factor because it's just not going to protect you sufficiently from the sun. So there is my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's given you some more information on this sun cream, uh, which again, I really like. I, hi I highly recommend as a moisturizer. And if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Definitely stick around for future videos. Hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you here. I'd love to see you again in my next video, which is a couple of days from now. Again, I post every other day. So I'll see you in the next video and I hope you have a good day. Bye.